Okay, we are gonna hear such an amazing testimony in this video. One of the top 0.1% of OnlyFans creator, Nala Ray, just recently got saved. And I'm telling you guys, it is incredible what God is doing. One thing that I don't do here on this channel is when celebrities or big time influencers get saved, I am not negative. I am not the guy that's like, oh, this must not be genuine. Let's just watch and see. I praise God that any of these people that are in this industry come into the kingdom of God. If God can save you, why can't God save one of the top OnlyFans creators? She was making $300,000 a month, made over $7 million on OnlyFans, and now she's serving God. Now she's preaching Jesus and spreading the gospel message, and it's amazing. So we're gonna cover that in this video. Many people didn't think this was genuine, but let's cover it and I'll give you my thoughts on it. Okay, first thing I wanna show you is a video from her TikTok right after she got saved. This is a little bit of an older video, but I want you to notice the conviction that she has now. This is one thing I always look for when people have genuine born again experiences, is did they get convicted? Cause that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. I remember when I got saved, I was an atheist and the Holy Spirit started convicting me of cussing, of this, of that, of getting rid of things. I started getting rid of all these things. I was no longer cussing, I was no longer drinking, I was no longer partying, so to me, Conviction is a fruit of the Holy Spirit at work in someone's life. So let's just watch this. This was recently after she got saved or a little bit after she got saved. Just check this out. Update as to what's been going on in my life since I got saved. And let me tell you, you guys, it's been crazy. So a lot of bad things have been happening lately. And I, I got into like a car accident. My parents are divorcing. Like it's crazy how much is going on in my life. Now, how many of you know when you get saved, the devil comes, especially with someone like her who is a huge creating lots of corn. Um, when you get saved and you get delivered and God sets you free, the devil comes and tempts you and tries to wreak havoc in your life. That I've had to deal with lately, but it's truly the attacks from the enemy. You guys, I could barely think of one thing that was truly going wrong in my life when I was doing OnlyFans and serving the devil truly. Like my works were in vain. But since I became a Christian and got baptized and rededicated my life to the Lord, so much has been going on in my life and I feel that the spiritual warfare, oh my gosh, Preach. we are at war, fam, but I'm excited about it. Yeah, so she's already understanding the spiritual war that's going on. And guys, again, I see so much negativity about this online and I don't understand it. Why are we praying for people like her to get saved, delivered, we're preaching it, Lord, save them, save these industries and then we reject them when they get saved. Like the prodigals come home, and why are we rejecting them? We should be celebrating. She should be on your prayer list. You should be excited about this. Like, man, why are we so negative as Christians? Because I know that these are attacks from the devil and not God. God might be allowing these things to happen in my life right now, but it's because he wants a prudent soldier for him. I wow. want to be that soldier. I want to fight for our Lord Jesus Christ because he's so worth it. Okay. I want you guys to think about how crazy this is. A few weeks ago, she was one of the top corn stars in the world. And then here a few weeks later, she's saying, I want to be a soldier for God. I want to fight for God. Spiritual warfare is real. Like guys, this is incredible. This is mind blowing. This is God moving. Don't be a skeptic. This is God moving. And she was raised in a Christian home. Her dad was a pastor, which she has like a two and a half hour interview. I'm going to cover a little bit of it. But wow. I mean, honestly, this is just so exciting to see happen. Okay, you guys, he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. You know, okay, let me let me just tell you one thing. So, um, so much has been going on in my life and I have been feeling convicted because there's uh, in Psalm 139, I can't quote the scripture directly but it's talking about asking god directly god where am i falling short god tell me on, my sins search my heart, god Lord. like please open and reveal these things in my life so that i can get rid of them to serve you better it's about fixing what's in here before you go out there okay so this is what been like this is what god's been laying on my heart lately so you know i'm a female i bought a lot of clothes and all listen up ladies listen to this listen this to this crap it's truly crap, by the way. Materialistic things are just crap. So um, God has been laying on my heart that my, one, I need to be more modest, okay? And that is literally like to be able to find your future husband and truly like not tempt others with your body or with anything else. God is telling me. Hey. Just reminding you guys, a few weeks ago, she was one of the top again. And now listen to how she's preaching. She's preaching strong. Type one in the comments if this is not good preaching. 
She's preaching about modesty. Hey, Nala, you need to be more modest, okay? So I was like, okay, God, what is it that I can do to become more modest? So I have bagged up. There's like so many more downstairs. I have bagged up all of my clothes, not all of them, but like anything that I felt that might be That's lustful amazing. or Praise the Lord, Sister, we are praying for you. Nala, we are praying for you. This is amazing what God is doing in your life. It's absolutely amazing what God is doing in your I life. bagged it up. I'm throwing it away. I don't care. I have given away all of my designer things. I don't own one designer thing right now. Um, I've kept a couple sentimental things, but that is truly because they were just gifts. But God is truly like speaking to me and telling me like, Hey, these are you, this is your wickedness right here. And I need you to take care of it for me so that I can plant my seed in you and so that you can go out into the world and be a Come true on. soldier. Thank for you, Christ. Jesus. Okay, you guys, don't be discouraged when God tells you to look at something in your life with like a flashlight, okay? Because it's in the darkness, you know? And that darkness cannot comprehend the light. That's what the Bible says. So you guys. I just want to encourage you when God is speaking to you, listen, because it's his, it's him trying to get closer to you and work through you. And you cannot be fully blessed when you are, when you're holding on to something and God is saying, let it go, let it go. Give this to me so I can give you something bigger and better. That is truly the whole meaning behind this. So I want to encourage you if you are struggling with holding on to something that God is telling you to let go of, let it go and let God work because he will. Every circumstance that I've been going through right now that has been so hard, God has provided an answer for it. And wow, no no one else could ever do that for me. I promise you, they could not ever solve any of my problems like God is solving them. This is so good. And again, many Christians are saying this is fake. She's doing this for hype. She's trying to get people to her OnlyFans. By the way, her OnlyFans has been deleted. She already shows in another video an email of her sending to OnlyFans saying, delete my account. It's been deleted. That's fake news, guys. We need to be praying for her because she's going out there sharing her faith. She's now going live on TikTok sharing the gospel. Like, only God. Guys, nobody is unreachable. I hope this is what you're getting from this video. Nobody is out of the reach of the hand of God. So let's look at another interview that she did. She makes some really, really good points here. Let's go to this screen and just listen to some of the stuff she's saying here. It's super powerful. And I just wanted to cover this. And I, I really want you guys to put her on your prayer list. When I first started seeing this stuff, I was like, okay, let's see where this goes. But I felt from day one, I was showing my wife some of these videos in the like uh, maybe a month ago, three weeks ago. But it seems so genuine. Even my wife's like, man, this is so genuine of her saying, like, I'm serving God. I'm deleting my OnlyFans. I'm going after God. And so it's such a beautiful thing I wanted to cover on my channel because this is God working in the earth right now. You know, we had Gideon, who's a friend of mine now that I had on the channel, who is big time in YouTube and super famous with all the celebrities. God radically saved him. Kat Von D, God radically saved her. Now this girl, she made $9 million on OnlyFans. And I'll link this video in the description. But $9 million she made on OnlyFans, $300,000 a month. And then God saved her. Let's, let's listen to some of the stuff she says about money and happiness and wealth. Uh, practically, like, I guess there's a number on a right. screen that is larger, but practically, it doesn't, at a certain point, it really doesn't affect your life that much. I understand. Certainly. It really doesn't. And I came to that point, that conclusion that, you know, I was making millions and I didn't feel any different. Yeah. I could buy anything that I wanted and I still felt the exact same. Yeah. And that, that feeling that I was feeling was empty. You know, all that numbness was emptiness, like complete and total emptiness and unaware of that for mm. sure. But loneliness emptiness, not feeling fulfilled. You know, I was like a creator and I was like, oh, I'm being creative, but that's such a lie. Like that's not creative to spread your legs. It's not, right. Wow. Right. it's not at all. It's not even procreative. Not at all. Contraception. Absolutely not. And um, I went through this really crazy. So she talks about how she got married, which is awesome. And then I want to go to here where she talks about encountering the Holy Spirit, and how she made $9 million. But let's just go to this, just jump in here. I'll, and I'll link this in the description. It's like two and a half hours. You guys can watch it if, you, if you're if you interested. I won't cover, obviously, most of it, but let's just listen this to this. At this point, I had grossed nine million. That is a lot That's of money. That's insane. Yeah. But man, that was the biggest point of all of this was like, money doesn't matter. Come on. It did not bring me 
true joy. Like you can be happy, like, oh, I just got a new bag, cool. But that's not joy. Like the joy yeah. that the Lord gives you is like- And this is something she's saying coming from this type of money. You know, we can say that, those that aren't millionaires, those that aren't rich, we could say, oh yeah, it doesn't bring you happiness, but she literally has everything and she's saying it doesn't bring you happiness. And maybe you're in her shoes right now watching this video, God can reach you. You're not out of God's reach. That is the theme of this entire video and her entire testimony is nobody is too far from the hand of God. Well, one, he says it's your strength, but the joy that I have now is nothing compared to worldly happiness. Like worldly things will tell you like, oh, you need these things truly, which is crap. Materialistic things are crap. You know, yeah. for me, that's how I feel. I'm yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I tell you, I don't. Anybody on that manner. I mean, I, I like certain, th actually the the main thing that I spend money on, I I literally light on fire. Which yeah, is and burns, and it burn. burns. But, <laughs> so. but otherwise, I don't, I really. Don't smoke. Ladies and gentlemen, do not take his advice here. Do not smoke. It literally kills you. I don't like it. And I like, if I, if I saw a woman, like uh, the, the thing you're describing is what I would say. I don't like it. I don't, I, I have no desire to have a Porsche. I have no desire to have, uh, you know, a Prada handbag. I guess most men don't. <laughs> I, I, but that kind of thing. And if I saw a woman walking around, you know, with like rocks all over her hand and bags and, and a Porsche, I would actually find that r repelling. Repelling. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I, I got to look at myself in like this magnifying glass or like God did, I want to say, like with a flashlight in the darkness, you know. Um, and I didn't understand what I was feeling, but I just knew it was like this outpour of emotion that I had not felt in such a long time. Hmm. So I was like, wow. Like, so here she can talk about what's her encounter crazy with God. is I was in my living room, my huge living room. So here's her encounter with God, guys. Listen to this. It's amazing. And I, the couple of days prior, I had gotten my Bible out to set on a shelf because I needed something in that shelving cabinet and it was just out. It was like an old Bible you had as a kid or a it more was recent? A, it was a Bible that I had since 2009. It was a birthday gift from my parents. Hmm. So I, I wrote the date in and everything, which is why I remember that, but it was out and I was sobbing in my living room and I just wanted an answer for why I was feeling this way, why I never felt anything and like why my life just felt like it probably wasn't gonna go anywhere, right? At wow. this point, I'm like, what's the point of all this money when I don't have feelings or yeah. I don't have a person or I don't have kids? I have nothing but materialistic things that are cold and sitting in my closet. And th that will decay. Wow. Absolutely. Right. That will... Like monetary worth is worth truly nothing. But the special part is, is that like I was sobbing, I was looking at my fireplace, I grabbed the Bible and I just like sat there and I was just like praying. I was just like, God, I wasn't blaming God. I was just like, God, why do I feel this way? Like, what is it that I'm doing wrong? Obviously, bling, 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 but yeah. you know. What is it? I just can't put my I finger on it. I can't put know? my finger on it. But it was this special point where God decided to truly meet me where I was. And it's not like he was far from me. It was that I was far from him. Yeah. Mm. And that I was like, God, I need an answer now. I truly need an answer now. And he was like, all you ever needed was me. So all I ever needed was him. I wow. literally not only saw that in my brain, but like heard it. And that was all he needed to say to me for it to like manifest and to like to sink mm. into my heart and my brain. And I just kept thinking that over and over and over again. And it, it wasn't in that moment that I had truly repented or anything. It was that I needed an answer and he gave me an answer. What's funny about that answer? Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, a very famous story about St. Thomas Aquinas' life, one of, if not the most intelligent person ever to walk the earth. Wow. And uh, he writes the Summa Theologiae and many other works. And uh, at the end of his life, he has a vision of God. And God says, you have written well of me, Thomas. What would you have? What would, what would you like me to give you? And his answer is nothing but you, Lord. Wow. And that's Amen. the same answer that you got. Amen. It's so amazing how simple God answers you and it, it speaks so much power in life. In, it spoke life into me because I was like, at that point, I was like, okay, God, strip me now. Like, this is now time to like start peeling away the onion. You know, it's gonna make my eyes water, which I'm crying, but I need this stripped away. No matter what this next part looks like, I am ready for it because I know I need a change. I cannot wow. do this anymore. It's amazing. So, I told Jordan, my husband now, that I needed 
I, I had that interaction with God. He was so rejoiced, like had told his mom even about it. And his mm. mom is an amazing mother-in-law to me and um, is a full, full believer in Christ and has helped me in this journey so much by praying, giving me scripture, being there for me. And it was truly a domino effect after that. After that moment, I had one, we had went to a new church and it was crazy because God always provides because they were doing baptisms in that, that church that we had just, this was the first Sunday we were going there. They were doing baptisms and the baptisms were just ending when we got there. Hmm. I'm not 100% positive, but I'm really, really pretty positive. The church she's talking about, the pastor of that church, is actually was the youth pastor of the church I got saved at in 2011. I'm almost positive. I won't say the name because I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 98% sure, which is just crazy the way God works all this and just amazing what he's doing. And I felt so heavily that God was telling me, go get baptized right now. I was in jeans and like a collared shirt. And I was like, I got to go get baptized right now. Like right this very second, I need to be saved. I need to be rededicated to Christ. Had you been baptized before? Mm -hmm. Probably okay. when I was like seven, something like that, so many years ago. Um, but then they, they were done baptizing people. Like the guy was out of the pool. Yeah. And um, I went over there in like tears. And I was like, I need to get baptized. Please baptize me. And they were just so sweet and so heartwarming and just took me in. And they were like, here's a t-shirt, here's some shorts, like go get changed and we'll baptize you right now. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so That's I got awesome. baptized and I want people to understand like when you truly accept Jesus in your heart, it is like a, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, the veil tore, correct? Like it was the separation was now completely divided between like the old law, you know, is now no longer and that Jesus had covered everyone's sins in his blood. So it was like this veil had torn. Come on. I was like Amazing. blinking and I was like, why does everything look different? Like this is the same room, but it looks born different. again. I remember thinking that, oh, it makes me emotional when you're born again and nothing looks the same. The trees don't look the same. Green doesn't look like green. Blue doesn't look like blue. I remember thinking like, I don't even recognize where I'm at. The colors look different, people look different. That is that genuine born again experience where you're a new creature. And then when I go outside, the sun is even brighter Come on. and the trees are even greener. And I didn't even see that, watch this before. This is my first time watching this, by the way. So I didn't know she was gonna say that, but praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That's exactly what it is. It is, I can smell and I was crying and I have feelings. Come on. And I was like. Guys, I didn't cry for 10 years when I got saved. And I, to be able to cry again was like so crazy to me. It's shocked. For the next couple of days, I spent just basically crying. Like I was so overwhelmed with emotion again. And I was okay with it. It wasn't sadness. It was yeah. just, I have so much emotion. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't like I'm PMSing. It was true <laughs> emotion, which anyone who out there wants to say I'm like, on my period or something, it wasn't anything like that. It was raw emotion and joy for what God had helped me get through and put the piece in the puzzle hmm. that was missing. And again, I wasn't I wasn't dating Jordan yet. Like we were still just best friends. And amazing. So this is an amazing two and a half hour interview, guys. I'm so excited about this. This is such an answer to prayer and we need to keep praying for her. I definitely will probably invite her on the podcast to share her story. It's just so powerful and amazing. Again, make, made $9 million, $300,000 a month, and now she's going on TikTok, sharing her faith, talking about God, surrendering her life, deleted her OnlyFans, throwing out her clothes, just preaching strong. It's beautiful, it's amazing. Encourage her guys in the comments. You know, she's gonna watch this video. People that I cover on these videos, they watch these videos. Encourage her in the comments. Say something encourage her, encouraging to her. Let her know you're praying for her. We, we got to pray for her. We got to believe God to carry these people, to use these people. She is going to have influence I don't have. She's going to reach people you can't reach. So we all need each other in the body of Christ. And I hope you're encouraged by this video. I'm tremendously encouraged by what God is doing in her life. And I pray that there's a revival in the um, corn industry. I pray there's a revival among these adult stars that God would save them, that God would deliver them. Many of them need deliverance after they come out of this lifestyle. You know, one of my good friends came out of this lifestyle. Uh, uh, I've had him on the channel before. And man, I'm telling you right now, 
God is doing something in this industry. Revival is happening. Let me know what you guys think about this video down below in the comments. Excuse my voice. I'm having some allergies. My voice is a little bit messed up. We are live Monday night at 6, Tuesday night at 6, and then Thursday at noon. Pray also be about becoming a monthly partner. We do all of our content for free, and we survive based on your guys' monthly support. So thank you guys for that. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.